Good morning, everyone, and happy Easter. My name is Ron Watson, and I'm pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Ocala, Florida. Like you, this is a new Easter experience for us as well. We are used to Easter lilies and Easter egg hunts and joyful songs by the choir. It's a little different for us today, that is, all except for the joy, which remains the same. Today we celebrate the resurrection of the risen Lord, a day that changed the course of history forever. I hope you're well and are staying safe. We are all becoming a little hopeful that perhaps this won't go on and on. It may be too soon to call it the light at the end of the tunnel, but we are hopeful. I pray that your Easter celebration is meaningful and that you can connect with your friends or family later today. In a virtual way this morning, we are all connected together as the body of Christ. Easter mornings, even ones we, we spend social distancing, Easter mornings are joyful. Welcome to church. Let us be called to worship. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
let's all approach the throne of God's grace with confidence and confess our sins with my words and our silent prayers. Let us pray. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We ignore the cries of the oppressed and are indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and misuse your creation. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and to make us new, that we may know the joy of life abundant given in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. And now, silent prayer. Amen. My friends, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting until everlasting. God loves you. Jesus died and rose for you and me on this Easter morning. I declare to you, we are forgiven. Amen. to always to remember the story about me. It is Easter morning and I have risen. Good morning and happy Easter, you guys. Did you see how Jesus was so thoroughly putting down each and every one of those eggs? Well, I collected some of them. So let's see what he left us. Hmm. It's empty. It's empty too. Ah, they're all empty. Man, I was really wanting some candy or something. You know, I bet he did this on purpose. He's probably trying to make sure that we remember why Easter's even originated and why it's here. It's because of him. Because he passed away for us and was in his tomb, was bounded in his tomb on Friday. And then on Easter morning, when his disciples and Mary, the two Marys went to the tomb, it was empty. And he totally surprised them. They did not have any idea that that was gonna happen. I bet that's what he's trying to teach us about this. That was not a very funny trick, but it is a surprise. And I would say it's a pretty good surprise, actually. If we look it up in Matthew 28, um, it's chapter 28 and then verses 1 through 10. It actually tells us the story about it and how the two Marys found him and there was or found the tomb that he was in empty and they were completely surprised. Basically how I just was to collect all these eggs that I saw him put out and I was so excited because I thought I was going to have candy or coins or something really good inside and it turns out there was nothing. So can you imagine how much more surprised they were though? when they went to his tomb and it was empty completely and there was an angel there that told them that was sitting on top and it told them that they needed to hurry up and go and tell the disciples to catch up to him in Galilee. See, he had already left, had already been on his way to Galilee. And so they wanted, he want, Jesus wanted his disciples to go ahead and catch up to him, hurry up and find him. So it's actually kind of like an Easter egg hunt, really. We search and we search and we search for where they're hidden. And then when we finally get them all and we sit down, we just sit down with everybody and then we can open them up and see what's inside and see what our prizes are. Well, just like then it was, they went there, they opened it up and oh my gosh, he was gone. So they had to hurry up and go search him out. Like we search out our Easter eggs. It's a really great story. One that we should always, always, always keep in mind. One of my very favorite scriptures that is a good memory scripture for us to remember is in Luke. It's Luke 24 and it's verses six. And it says, he is not here, he has risen. So let's try and remember that in our daily things today, especially, which is he's not here. He wasn't in the tomb. He's not here in my egg. He is risen. It's all because of him today that we are allowed to be here. So that is just a wonderful thing. 
and thankfully we can enjoy the rest of our days with our family and hopefully a few of our little friends and I hope you guys got some good Easter stuff in yours since you didn't leave me anything. Hmm. Um, either way, it was a good lesson for me to learn, I guess, and now we'll make it even more memorable for me next year. Thanks. Have a great day. Let's go ahead and say one quick prayer before we exit, okay? Thank you, dear Lord, so much for allowing us this time and hope that this story reaches our hearts and we remember that it is Jesus is the reason that we are celebrating today and with our families and hopefully we always remember this very important lesson and we keep it very dear to our hearts. Through Jesus, amen. Do I hear you say amen? Got it. Thanks, have a great day. The day of resurrection, earth fell it out abroad. The Passover of gladness, the Passover of God. From death to life eternal, from sin's dominion free, our Christ has brought us. Good morning, First Presbyterian Church, and Happy Easter. I'm so glad to be here with you this morning, and we're going to continue our worship now with the presentation of our tithes and offerings. And first, I'd like to say thank you for your continued giving, even in the midst of these difficult times. It's because of your extraordinary generosity that we've been able to do the ministry for so many years here and to continue even in this difficult time. So thank you. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks on this Easter Sunday for your son Jesus, who is risen. We give you thanks for your creation, beautifully and wonderfully made with puzzles we don't understand, like illness, death, and disease, even in the midst of virus and pandemic, we hear the song of birds and know that they sing in praise to you. And this morning we have sung songs of praise and yet we worry. We worry for ourselves and our families. We worry for the nation and the world. We lift our prayers to you, O God, prayers for one another for this church, for your church around the world. For we know that this morning they gathered in Asia and across Africa and Europe and sang the same tunes, the same songs that we did. We pray for your church where doctors and nurses and other healing professionals were on duty this morning. We pray for them for those who are home, in bed, exhausted, for all who work and worry for our society, paramedics and firefighters, those in law enforcement, for the soldier standing watch in a deserted place in harm's way or, or not, we pray for all of them for all who work for the betterment of this society. We pray for our president and those who advise him. 
for all who serve our government, our mayor and town council, those in county government and across our state, we pray for them, for all in leadership. Lord, hear our prayers. On Easter we gather, we celebrate Jesus' resurrection, and we pray together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear now the story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised as he said, come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Does God have your attention? That's my message for you today, this fine Easter 2020. Our sinful world, the paradise lost, is filled with challenging things from the time of the fall when Adam and Eve's sin forced them out of the garden. People have asked me if God is punishing us in some way with this dreaded virus. I don't believe that. Bad things exist in a sinful world. Sin and death go together. Easter Sundays are here to remind us that God is stronger than sin and death. I also believe that God can take bad circumstances like these and use them for good. It is sad for us not to be together in person today, but our YouTube services are reaching more than twice the number of people than our in-person services have recently. Does this mean we should give up our in-person services? Certainly not. But something good is coming out of our distress. Funny thing, when we seem to listen to God more carefully when we are in distress, does God have your attention yet? Isn't it ironic that one of the ways that we give God our attention is when we are afraid? That's not God's fault, that's our problem. Life is so good that when we have a handle on everything, we tend to be distracted from Creator by creation, yet another irony. Thanksgiving is only one day of a year. We let many good days go by without saying much, if any, thanks to God for those good days. So then is it not in those most terrifying moments when we give God our attention? Darkness in the middle of the day is quite an attention getter. I grew up in a church lit mostly by natural light pouring through 12 stained glass windows. One Sunday as the preacher was preaching, the room grew darker and darker, and it was nearly the middle of the day. I was young enough then to not be embarrassed to admit that now I have no idea what he was preaching about. I just remember writing a note on my bulletin to my sister, maybe you've done that in church. Is it getting darker in here or is it just my imagination? She assured me 
in the return note that it was happening. Local tornado, hail, windstorm, pouring rain, just another typical spring day in Tornado Alley. The thing I remember most was that I was sure glad we were in church that day because I felt like God was talking to the people who weren't. Darkness in the middle of the day is an attention getter. Even in ancient times, the appearance of darkness when all should be light was a touchstone of importance, a signpost for the ages of celestial significance. The darkness on Good Friday, what was it? Eclipse, storm, something else? The ancients would not have looked for a scientific cause, but rather would have come to the correct conclusion beyond science. Something very strange and important is happening. And after the triumphal entry and the public trial, the people knew what that event was. Surely some were oblivious. Someone always is oblivious, but not the wise ones, not the people in the know, not the politicians, not the Sanhedrin, not the Pharisees, not any who could read the words of Pilate on the condemned man's cross, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. God had gotten their attention. Maybe you've been in an earthquake. I have it. I have that in my radar application on my phone, which lets me see the whole world and where it's raining. But interesting thing, with the flick of a switch, you can turn on the earthquake feature and see everywhere in the world there is an earthquake. And I learned the most amazing thing by doing this. There's an earthquake somewhere in the world almost every day. On this past Wednesday, there were, there were five on my map. None was too destructive, but most were significant enough to be felt by someone. The poor island nation of Tonga on Wednesday, the Pacific, had an earthquake and a typhoon nearby on the exact same day. But whose attention did God get on Easter Sunday? First, the guards and all around the tomb, but particularly the women. Hear the words as the First day of the week was dawning. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So I said I haven't been in an earthquake, but I have been shaken. I've been on a cruise ship and it rocked a little bit. Uh, but the worst experience, and maybe this has happened to you too, was, was on a jet. What is, when I experienced what is euphemistically referred to in the airline business as moderate turbulence. But they could call it being scared to death at 35,000 feet. I remember mar remarking to a fellow passenger, this is not fun anymore. It went on maybe 10 minutes, but it seemed like hours. It felt like our little tin can world was gonna be torn apart. We were being thrust downward in what seemed like violent 100 to 300 foot burst. So it wasn't an earthquake, but there I felt as if someone was shaking my world violently. I really began looking for an angel or, or Jesus or the Father or the Spirit to say, do not be afraid. But instead only I heard the flight attendant saying that we weren't going to have beverage service. And please stay seated with your seat belt fastened as if anyone needed to be told that. It was pretty obvious that we were not really in the hands of the pilots anymore, but in the hands of God. Did that shaking, did that get their attention on Easter morning? If not, just to be sure, an angel came like lightning. For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow, that is, the angel. I don't know if that meant that he came down like a bolt of lightning or, or shimmered like lightning. But lightning isn't a word used much in the New Testament, except for world-changing events like the fall of Satan or the second coming of Jesus, or in this case, the return of Jesus in resurrection. But the first words out of the angel's mouth were what? Fear not. God's message once God has our attention, is to fear not. One of my best friends from seminary, David Dendy, signs off all of his communications with the words, fear not and laugh often. 
I think those words sum up Easter in a way, don't they? In a bolt of lightning, an angel appears and says, fear not. Those are the first words spoken by the angel. They are the first words spoken to Mary when she is first told that she will give birth to the Son of God. Fear not. These are the words that Jesus speaks right after greetings. Fear not. Do not be afraid. And laughter. Because in the Easter moment, God's great joy is our great joy. We are now together forever. Thanks to the Son of God who died for us and rose from the dead. I ask again, does God have your attention yet? Think about how subtle some or many of the miracles of Jesus might have appeared to uh, some of those people 2,000 years ago. Maybe you were in the back of the crowd uh, the day of the feeding of the 5,000, having a picnic in the wilderness when you remembered you didn't bring any food and thinking, hey, somebody must have remembered to pack or was that Jesus doing a miracle? Or what did Jesus say to that woman anyway about her faith making her well? Or I know that that guy's been blind his whole life. Can he really see? On Good Friday, on Easter Sunday, God was through with subtlety. Why? Why indeed? Because what God started on Good Friday, God finished on Easter Sunday once and for all time. Look at all the flowers outside of this beautiful weather. Even here in Florida, living things go a bit dormant in the winter, but as the first camellias fight back the frost, we know spring is coming. Our azaleas peaked weeks ago, but yet again we were reminded of the joy of spring, of new life, of what looks dead coming remarkably back to full flower. From death on Friday to life on Easter Sunday, death has lost its sting. Look at the flowers, even here in Florida. Living things go dormant in the winter, but as the first camellias fight back the frost, we know that spring is coming. Our azaleas peaked weeks ago, but yet again we are reminded of the joy of spring, of new life, of what looks dead coming remarkably back to full flower. From death on Friday to life on Easter Sunday, death has lost its sting. God's spring message is God's Easter message. What was dead is alive. Does God have your attention yet? I've got to send a message to anyone left watching that God has yet to get the attention of. Don't wait. Don't wait for darkness or earthquake or lightning. You don't have to wait. Let this joyful moment be your moment with God. God is trying so desperately to get our attention, not in bad ways, but in hopeful ways, in promise, in grace, in love, in resurrection. Maybe you haven't had much time for God in your life until this virus started. Now we've had time to think of many things, haven't we? But in busier times, maybe you've been occupied with so many different things that seemed at the time of great importance. The church in person or virtually is not just another community charity. Uh, I'm here to tell you that giving your life to God is not just volunteer hours for school credits or something we do out of shame or, or, or outrage or even just because we have good hearts. Giving your life to God is more than that. Yes, it might lead you to doing these wonderful things, things you might not necessarily do. I don't deny that, but giving your life over to God is not so much about helping churches fill seats or, or giving us YouTube views or adding dollars to our coffers, but it's, it's about your own happiness. A life lived with God is a better life. A life lived with God is a much fuller life. A life lived with God is a more rewarding life. And here's the secret. Even if you've been living without God, God is not living without you. God seeks this relationship with you every day, beloved child of God. God sent his only son so that you might have a better life, an eternal life, if only you would ask for it in faith. Only believe. Then God will send you to do loving things in the name of his resurrected son, Christ Jesus. I know that the world has changed now more than ever. I know that what we do in our in-person churches 
can seem either a bit old-fashioned to some or even in our contemporary services like so much hypocrisy. I also know that with technology today, we have this virtual church. You can have a virtual church. It is true, and thank God. But you cannot have a virtual faith. There's no such thing. There is only this journey that you're being invited to take on this Easter Sunday. However your journey goes with God, I would just remind you that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Begin that journey today. Christ's journey down a road that ended his death, the death of the most innocent human being that ever lived. But that human being was also God's own son, and he died that we might have life in abundance. He rose from the dead that we might have life eternal. God sent his son into darkness. And then with the roar of an earthquake, with the lightning appearance of an angel, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And now would you join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do his will, working among us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> 